This is Ray Mossholder with the top 10 fake news stories throughout 2021. And throughout 2021, the mainstream media was caught or forced to correct multiple stories that turned out to be misleading or untrue. From debunked stories such as the Steele dossier to new concerns over inflation, mainstream outlets badly reported on some of the biggest news stories of the year. Here are the top 10 most outrageous examples of the mainstream media reporting false or misleading stories in 2021. 1. The omitting of vital details on the Micaiah Bryant police shooting. In April, videos emerged of a police officer shooting a black teenager named Micaiah Bryant in Columbus, Ohio, after Bryant lunged at another girl with a knife. However, various media outlets originally neglected to mention the fact that Bryant was wielding a knife at the time of the shooting. In the New York Times coverage of the incident, the article included civil rights attorney Ben Crump's original claim that Bryant was an unarmed girl. The quote was later corrected, though the story still framed Bryant's knife as a police claim rather than it being observable from body cam footage, which it was. Although some news reports did acknowledge that Bryant held a knife, a few also attempted to spin or obscure other details of the shooting. NBC initially edited the 9-11 call that led to the shooting, taking out the caller warning about a girl trying to stab, direct quote, they cut that, another girl. Other sources, such as MNS MSNBC's Joy Reid, CNN and ABC's The View, also downplayed the events, depicting it as a schoolyard fight. Two. CNN airs fake single mom story. In August, CNN spotlighted a woman, Dasha Kelly, who claimed to be the single mother of three children who were concerned about being evicted from their home after the federal moratorium was set to expire. In addition to promoting this story, CNN also advertised the GoFundMe account used to support Kelly, which raised approximately $230,000. Shortly afterward, however, Kelly clarified that she wasn't the mother of the three children, but was instead their father's girlfriend. The funds were later suspended, but Kelly also managed to appear on CNN with Democrat Representative Cori Bush of Missouri. President Biden later announced a new moratorium on evictions to favor her, despite potential constitutional conflicts. Three, the Lincoln Project, which was formed by several ex-Republican congressional members for the purpose of stopping Donald Trump from winning any further elected offices. This group finally admitted to a white supremacist political stunt against Glenn Youngkin. In the days prior to the Virginia gubernatorial election between Democrat Terry McAuliffe and Republican Glenn Youngkin, a reporter for NBC 29 in Virginia posted a photo of five people 
dressed in white shirts and khakis, while holding tiki torches, standing in front of Yunkin's campaign bus. The image was meant to invoke comparisons to the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, where several white nationalist groups organized. Ensuing unrest that weekend led to the murder at Charlottesville of a woman by white supremacist James Fields, who ran his car into her. MSNBC legal analyst Glenn Kirshner and others shared the image as a supposed example that Youngkin's campaign was promoting white supremacy. The Lincoln Project later took credit for the stunt, attempting to emphasize Glenn Youngkin's failure to condemn white supremacy. The hoax was widely recognized as a desperate smear, and Youngkin went on to win the race. Four, while the FDA has not officially recommended ivermectin for coronavirus treatments, some people have nevertheless used ivermectin, a drug used on both humans and animals, to treat COVID-19 symptoms. Although the drug has been used for decades, many news programs and publications have spread misleading claims on ivermectin and its uses. Most noticeably, CNN referred to the drug as a, quote, horse dewormer. When podcaster Joe Rogan revealed he'd taken the drug on a doctor's recommendation. Rolling Stone Magazine and MSNBC's Rachel Maddow also pushed a false story that a hospital was forced to turn away gunshot victims after being overrun with patients who overdosed on ivermectin. The latter story was debunked after it was discovered the source was a single doctor who hadn't worked at the hospital in question for two months. Five, 60 Minutes aired false claims on Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, a possible Republican candidate for president in 2024. Misleading narratives on Florida Governor DeSantis frequently appeared in 2021. In particular, CBS News 60 Minutes program was accused of airing a deceptively edited clip between DeSantis and a reporter that suggested a pay-for-play scheme regarding vaccination distribution. In April, 60 Minutes aired footage of a press conference where the show's correspondent, Sharon Alfonsi, pressed DeSantis on awarding Publix, a popular supermarket chain with hundreds of locations in Florida with COVID-19 vaccines after receiving a campaign donation. Although DeSantis spent several minutes explaining the process of Publix receiving the privilege to distribute vaccines, 60 Minutes edited the scene down to DeSantis simply calling out the accusation as fake narrative. Several people, including DeSantis, have called out CBS for painting a false image of the governor or his COVID policies. Although 60 Minutes later recognized the criticism against the peace, CBS did not retract or apologize for the report. Five, media pushed false story about voter agents using whips 
against migrants. Seeing shouldn't always be believing. Your eyes can trick you. In September, a photo of border agents attempting to control a large crowd of Haitian migrants went viral, as re was reported as an agent using a whip against a migrant. The photo, along with an article from the El Paso Times, was shared and promoted by various Democrat politicians as horrifying and repulsive demonstration of border policies. President Joe Biden said these border agents would be strongly dealt with. The, the video was quickly defended by Border Patrol agents, noting that the agents didn't carry whips, and the image in question likely featured an agent holding the reins from his horse. The photographer of the image also insisted he never saw a border agent whip a migrant. A video also that was shown on TV appeared that there was a whipping. <laughs> but that was just the whipping up of a story. Despite this, the story led to an investigation that continued well into October. The Department of Homeland Security's Inspector General later declined to investigate the border agents any further in November, recognizing there was absolutely zero evidence to support the story. 6. Networks Mislead on Rittenhouse Trial While well, the reported 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, shooting three men and killing two of them, came from the 2020 Kenosha riots. The trial against Rittenhouse proceeded in late 2021. Rittenhouse was later acquitted of all charges amidst a heavily slanted media narrative against him, such as claims that he was a white supremacist, though both men he killed were white. Even after the acquittal, media pundits pushed false claims against Rittenhouse. And once again, President Biden said he strongly disagreed with the verdict. Rittenhouse's lawyer especially blamed CNN for their false reporting. Newspapers and the fake media constantly claim that Rittenhouse crossed state lines with his weapons, despite reports stating the gun he used was already present in Wisconsin. CBS even repeated the claim that after Rittenhouse's acquittal, various networks and outlets were forced to issue corrections following these claims. 7. Washington Post downplays Russian dossier impact. In November, Special Counsel John Durham charged Igor Danchenko, the alleged subsource, to the infamous Steele dossier with five counts of making false statements to the FBI. This was seen as the latest indictment to the dossier, which claimed that President Trump colluded with Russia to win the 2016 presidential election. And that dossier was held right through four years of his being in office till nearly the end. It's highly expected there'll be more charges ahead this year. While the dossier was pushed as an attack on Trump from the start of his administration, media outlets quickly began downplaying the role of the dossier in the Russian investigation 
as George Mueller brought out the truth. The most egregious example came from the Washington Post, whose reporters previously received Pulitzer Prizes for covering this story. They still have those prizes for their false news reports. Over a dozen articles on the Washington Post were corrected following Danchenko's arrest. Two articles in particular, published in March 2017 and February 2019, had large portions removed after the Post, quote, could no longer stand by the accuracy of those elements of the story. In spite of this, Washington Post columnist Max Boot, a fervent pusher of Russiagate, referred to the Steele dossier as a sideshow. 8. The media insists CRT is not taught in public schools. While debates over race theory, critical race theory that is, have gone on for months, critical race theory became a significant issue during the Virginia gubernatorial race after Democrat candidate Terry McAuliffe admitted that he doesn't think parents should have a say in what schools can teach. As Virginia parents grew more and more concerned over education in the state, media pundits insisted McAuliffe never said that, or that critical race theory was either a fake issue, pushed by Republicans, or simply not being taught in their schools. CNN repeated the claim that critical race theory was not an issue in schools, despite the phrase being found on the Virginia Department of Education website. MSNBC's Nicole Wallace went so far as to claim that critical race theory isn't real, despite recent studies showing that critical race theory in some way, shape, or form was being taught in schools. Even after Republican candidate Glenn Youngkin won the election, one of CNN's many fake news pushers, Dana Bash, continued to suggest that critical race theory was not in the Virginia curriculum. 9. Inflation is downplayed or ignored by media narratives. In December, reports showed that inflation rates increased by 6.8%. That's the largest increase in almost 40 years. While many, especially poor and middle class Americans, have begun feeling the pinch and the, as the rates continue to change and go higher in front of them in their daily lives, Multiple media outlets have either dismissed inflation worries or even argued for its benefits. MSNBC reports such as Joy Reid and Stephanie Rule, their reporters, denied that inflation was a major issue for Americans, claiming that household savings were increasing and people were only paying a little more. Several New York Times journalists also argued that inflation was primarily driven by rich people rather than middle-class Americans or the poor. Meanwhile, several articles pushed ridiculous headlines that offered positive spins on inflation. Yahoo Finance wrote, maybe Christmas shortages are a gift. A piece from the Atlantic magazine simply called on readers to 
stop shopping. Time Magazine also blamed average Americans in an article titled, How American Shoppers Broke the Supply Chain. 10. And if you're wondering whether you should get your television news from Canada, since there's so much fake news on the affirmation news channels and in the aforementioned newspapers, consider this. Canadian News headlined Aaron O'Toole, who was running for Prime Minister against Justin Trudeau, wants to bring U.S.-style health care to Canada. Or at least, that's what the Liberals and the legacy media continuously told voters during the 2021 election. As Justin Trudeau's polling numbers declined during the election, the Liberals got desperate, started a campaign of fear and misinformation, and the legacy media were happy to play along. Despite O'Toole's conservative platform promising more funding for Canada's public health care system, that didn't stop the Liberals and their friends in the media from accusing O'Toole of wanting to end public health care for Canadians. It sometimes fake news becomes liars news. Justin Trudeau went on to win re-election and remains the Prime Minister of Canada, the office he's held since 2015. That's a kind of result that keeps fake news prosperous. This is Ray. Notice that Fox News wasn't included in any of the fakery. That's because it still has its own opinion, but the news continually attempts to keep the news honest, even when you don't like hearing that it's true. It's also true that the later in the evening Fox News gets, the more conservatively slanted it gets. But it's by far my channel of choice. But I don't get most of my news source from it. And any time I make an error in what I report, I make every effort to correct it quickly so that you can keep knowing the truth. Fortunately, that only happened twice in 2021. And I thank YouTube for helping me keep this news going. I'll continue doing the news on reachmorenow.com and YouTube television as long as the Lord gives me strength. My prayer is that you'll avoid watching fake news altogether and recognize that whenever you hear it, it's time to switch channels.